Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdale here. In this video I'm going to continue my series on partial differential equations. Now in this section of um, the series of videos we've been looking at second order partial differential equations with uh, constant coefficients and we've been um, looking at how to solve equations with purely second order derivatives in them. Now, I'm going to show you a way of deriving a very famous second order PDE with constant coefficients called the wave equation. Okay, um, in previous videos we've shown how to build a general solution and also how to incorporate initial velocity and initial um, uh, initial position uh, together with the wave equation. So let's just remind ourselves of what the basic e wave equation in one spatial dimension is. Okay, so here C is a constant, Oop. constant. and u is a function of position x and time t. Okay, so um, let's get on with the derivation. We're going to stretch an elastic string to length l and fix or clamp the ends. Pluck the string at time t equals zero and release it so it vibrates, just like you would, for example, pluck a guitar string or perhaps pluck a, um, a violin string. Our aim is to accurately describe the motion of the string by determining the deflection, u, at position x and time t, um, in an accurate way. Okay, so here are a couple of basic diagrams that I've given. Imagine for some specific time, this is the deflection of the string. Okay, so, so this is the x horizontal axis, here's the u axis. You can see um, uh, essentially what we're going to do is to consider a small part of the string and do some analysis on that. Let's have a look at our physical assumptions first. Firstly, our string is made of the same material all the way through, the mass per unit length being constant. Our string does not resist bending, this is known as perfect, uh, perfect elasticity. The gravitational force acting on the string can be ignored due to large tension caused by stretching the string prior to clamping it at the endpoints. And each particle of the string moves up and down or vertically only, not side to side, exhibiting small motions. So the deflection and the slope within each point of the string remains small. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So to, to, so to actually derive our PDE, let's consider a small section of our string lying, say, above x to x plus delta x. Now, since we've assumed that our string offers no resistance to bending, the tension is tangential to the curve of the string at every point. Okay, so that t1 and t2 denote the tensions at the end point, say, p and q of our small string problem. So these are like tangential at the endpoints. Due to the assumption that there's no side to side movement, only up and down, the horizontal components of these forces must be constant. So with a little bit of trig, you can show that this is, uh, these two expressions are equal to a joint constant value. Now in the vertical direction, there are two forces, the vertical components of this vector and this vector. Now again, if you do a little bit of trig where you've got the angles alpha and beta in here, you can um, show that the vertical components of these two forces, tension forces, are here. Now the negative sign on the first one is just due to the component of uh, at P pointing downwards. Okay. Okay. So, if we now apply Newton's law, F equals ma, we know that 
the resultant of the two forces, the vertical forces, is equal to the mass of the string portion. Okay, so the mass of the string, so, so basically we, we're between x and x plus delta x. So the mass of the string por portion is rho times delta x. Okay, where rho is the density function. Okay, uh, the, the mass of the string portion times the acceleration. Okay, thus we have the resultant forces are equal to this product. Okay, so we can now play with this expression and come up with our PDE. Now we know that the, the, these expressions are equal to a joint constant. So what I can do is divide here and here, or just, I, I guess you're just dividing um, both sides by this, this, which are all equal. Now these ratios are just 10, okay? <clears throat> and in this simple model, the tan values are the corresponding slopes of the string at the endpoints of our small little portion. Okay, therefore, we have these um, relationships. Okay, so what we can do now is replace these with these derivatives. move the delta x over here and then what do I have here? Well, I've almost got a second order derivative and in fact if I let the uh, delta x go to zero this will become the second order derivative of u with respect to x. Okay. Okay, so let me um, let me just. I think that's the, that there's a little mistake there. Let me fix up. That should be the tension over the density. Okay, so if I let delta x go to zero there, this will become u sub xx. If I take that to the other side with t on rho, I'll get the following. Okay, so that then is my wave equation. Now, some of you might be thinking, what about in higher dimensions? Well, the, the same idea will work, for example, if your um, function is, uh, your u is a function of, say, x, y, and t. It's a little bit more difficult, but the, the, but the idea will work again. If you go up to higher dimensions, then um, there are some shortcuts available, okay, for deriving this, this problem. Well, that's a, a basic derivation of the wave equation. Um, in other video, videos, I'll show you how to tackle more uh, problems involving the wave equation, inhomogeneous problems and so on. I hope you can join me for those presentations.